Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I sharpen portrait images and how you can sharpen portrait images in the future. I hope you're going to enjoy this video. So I'm not going to talk too much about basic sharpening tools, about sharpening filters, but about this one specific sharpening way that could be really comfortable for you to use this during portrait retouching. I want to find something that is not too heavy for your, for your computer, something that gives you a lot of control and not really gives you the effect that will be too strong or too soft for your image. And you can actually see I already applied the sharpening effect and you can see I just sharpened the skin texture, give this a bit more character when you can see before and after. This is a very simple, soft effect. So let's start from the beginning. And in this case, I'm using frequency separation, which is actually a nightmare for many people because many people don't know how to use that. They achieve weird results. Luckily, using this for sharpening won't, won't give you any weird results and it's absolutely safe to use that. I'm going to create a stamp and then I'm going to duplicate this stamp. To create a stamp, press Alt or Option, Control or Command Shift and E. Then I'm going to duplicate this layer once again, Control or Command J. The first layer I'm going to call Blur and another layer will be Sharpen. So you can actually find out which layer will stay at the end. And we're going to start with this uh, blur layer and pay attention to this because this step is really important and the value that we have to set is super important. So I'm going to filter and choosing nothing else than simple basic Gaussian blur. To see everything clear, I'm going to find some skin texture and right now what we need to find. We don't want to go with blur too much to blur out all of the skin texture because our sharpen works on the base of opposition. So if we blur this out too much right now, later we will sharpen our image way too much. So what we do, we're choosing soft radius that actually softly blurs out this little skin pores because that's something we want to sharpen just a little bit. So I'm going to the point and I can see I'm just already sharpened that but I'm going a bit more till 2.4 just to make this visible for the purpose of this tutorial. I don't think it should be ever more than 3 pixels, usually around 2 pixels if you work on the standard images. Let's hit OK. So you can already see it's blurred before and after. Now I'm going to sharpen image and apply image. And once again, it's already said you need to pay attention to this layer as a source. Of course, will be blurred because we get in the information from that. And this is 16 bit image. So for 16-bit image, we're going with blending as an add, scale to offset zero, and this invert box, invert box will be checked. If you have 8-bit image, the values will be a bit different here. Instead of add will be subtract, scale will be two, offset one to eight, and this box won't be checked. Remember, you need to get this effect, this high pass effect. So this is 16-bit image, all of the raw images, if you work with raw images, it will be 16-bit. If you're not sure about the values, just leave a comment and I will help you. Hit OK. And at this point, we don't need our blur layer anymore. I'm going to work just with Sharpen. If you want to finish your work quickly, you can just set vivid light. This is not that strong effect. If it's too strong, you can just lower opacity a bit. And your work, your sharpening work, you will get really great result will be done right now. So simple, isn't it? If you want to get even more control, I would go with linear light, which is a bit stronger in this case. And then I'm working with channels. Why with channels? Well, usually when you retouch the image, usually the highlighted areas are more retouched than the other areas. So you want to keep your sharpen on the highlighted areas and you don't want 
that much sharpening on the areas that are not highlighted because these areas are usually rough. So you 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 have to try which channel will be suitable for your image. I think I need to sharpen pretty big areas in this case, so I will not go with blue. Usually I go with blue or red. As you can see, when I'm setting red, actually I can see the areas that I don't want to sharpen, like eyebrows and the hair. It will be sharpened, but not that much. And the highlights, the skin is nearly all white. So these are the areas I really want to sharpen. I'm going to take selection from red then. I'm going to press Ctrl or Command to take a selection. And to this sharpen, I'm just going to create layer mask. And it's already applied. It's much more suitable. It's, um, as you can see, it's not strong. It's full of control. And still, if it's too strong, you can lower opacity. In this case, I feel the lips are too sharpened I'm just going to, to take down, paint over the leaves. I, I don't think they are suitable. So that will be black color to make this invisible. Just a bit over here. And this now looks much better. Thank you for watching this video. Leave a comment if you know other techniques. If you like other techniques, leave a comment. If you like this, if not, why? And anything you want to ask, just leave a comment. From me, thank you and see you in the next Photoshop tutorial.